And our first guest is joining us via satellite from Las Vegas, Mr. Matthew Schisler is the CEO of Cord Blood America, stock symbol CBAI. Uh, Matt, good to see you again. Hey, Don, it's been a while. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, we're very pleased to be reinitiating coverage of Cord Blood America. And that has, we mentioned, been a little bit of time since we last had you on the program. Can you uh, tell our audience again what the company does? Cord Blood America, we privately bank umbilical cord blood stem cells for families. Don, what that means is that families uh, pay us to store the umbilical cord blood stem cells uh, for their children. Those stem cells happen to be a perfect match for that child and can be used in transplant if ne necessary in the future to help repopulate the immune system and fight off uh, life-threatening diseases. Now, Matt, of course, one major reason that we're seeing you uh, from Las Vegas this time around is you've opened your, your new cryogenic storage facility there. Uh, tell us about that. That's exciting. Don, you've been following us. We, for six years of the seven years that we've been in business, we started in January 2003. And up until uh, January of this year, we had always outsourced laboratory services uh, to process and store the stem cells. But we finally hit that delta, Don, that, uh, ma that made more sense for us to own and build our own laboratory and do our own processing and storage. And so when we hit that delta, that enough sales and enough, enough customers to make it more feasible to do, we looked around at the, the, the climate and, and a few different, different factors as to where we would want to locate our stem cell laboratory. And, and Las Vegas just kept coming up for a number of reasons, uh, obviously because of the, the, the cost and the, inex the inexpensive uh, cost of living out here. The business climate is tremendous. The Las Vegas, uh, I'm sorry, the Nevada Development Authority was very aggressive in getting us out here. So there was a number of reasons that we located here in Las Vegas, including being uh, very close to the fifth largest airport in the country that has uh, a lot of traffic and makes easy for uh, shipping our samples in and out of the lab. Well, you know, it's been amazing to watch the growth of your company over the five or six years we've been watching you. And I, not, and I saw you just acquired a majority stake in a company called Stellicure. It's uh, Germany's third largest cord blood bank. Uh, what does that mean to Cord Blood America? It means we're global now, Don. I, I said at the beginning of the year, um, that there's was, there was three key pillars to our success in 2010. The first one was organic growth, the second one was acquisition, and the third one was diversification of revenue streams. This falls in bucket number two, into acquisition. And what this means is now that not only are we processing and storing cord blood stem cells here in the States, but now we have a presence in Europe um, uh, acquiring the third largest cord blood bank, of, uh, uh, the name is Stellicure. And uh, Stellicure processes at the German Red Cross and actually has affiliates in Spain and Italy that also sell its services. So this is, a, this is the uh, step towards our global expansion, Don, and we're very excited about it. Well, I can guess that you are. Again, congratulations, Cord Blood America, their stock symbol CBAI. For more information, you can call us from anywhere in the world, including Germany, at 888-259-4449. Now, Matt, uh, your recent addition to uh, your company, uh, Shamoon Ahmad, he's a director of your medical advisory board, had announced a couple of weeks ago that diseases such as Parkinson's, diabetes, even muscular sclerosis can be treated with umbilical cord uh, blood stem cells. This is a list that's just continuing to grow. You know, it really is. I mean, Don, since you've been covering us, the, the use of stem cells have always been hematopoietic, which means they repopulate the immune system, where if someone undergoes a bone marrow stem cell transplant or a cord blood stem cell transplant, their immune system uh, becomes strong and can, and can battle through uh, doses of radiation and chemotherapy. But what Dr. Ahmad is referring to is that those stem cells also in the umbilical cord have um, regenerative traits, which means it can regenerate tissues and remake other forms of cells. And so diseases like Parkinson's and uh, diabetes, uh, multiple sclerosis, are all diseases which need some sort of cell or tissue regeneration. And uh, Dr. Ahmad is very bullish on the fact that these cells can do that. And what we believe in this umbilical cord blood stem cell industry is that some, between five and ten years from now, a lot more of these diseases are going to show uh, curative um, uh, therapies uh, coming to market using stem cells. And so rather than treating the disease with pharmaceuticals um, for a lifetime, we hopefully will be able to treat them with uh, the own organic uh, tissue of stem cells and perhaps even cure the diseases. You know, Matt, nine years ago when our daughter was born, uh, Tracy and I weren't even given that option. We didn't know about doing that. Is there any data now as to what percentage of parents are now opting to store umbilical cord blood and, and what can be done to increase that number? Yeah, it's, it's slightly under 4%, Don. Um, and that's actually been the same number uh, for the last two or three years. Uh, what we believe, and you've followed us in the industry for a while, is that 
The next great jump in percentage of parents storing stem cells will be larger diseases being treated and cured with stem cells, like something like a diabetes uh, getting to market, which affects a large percentage of the population comparatively. At that point, more families will look at the stem cell storage industry and say, you know, we have a family history of this disease. It might make more sense of us for us to store the stem cells. So we think the next great tipping point in the industry is the next the stem cell therapies that actually come to market and become commercialized. Now the company had a press release I think about a week ago where you stated it was your goal to become the number one stem cell storage company in the world. Uh, can you give us a little more elaboration on that? Yeah, Don, I've been saying this for years. Um, we do want to be the world's largest uh, stem cell storage company. The reason is, and I, and I look at other industries, um, if you control the inventory, you control the, you control the curing and, the, and the, the distribution of the, of the industry. And so by controlling the storage, whether it be private banking, which we're currently in, public banking, which would mean that it, it's uh, a pool of stem cell resources that uh, hospitals can, uh, can pull from and use for stem cell transplant, whether it be for corporations or for government, we want to be. We want to build the network of the world's largest storage facilities, and thus be the world's largest storage company. Because with that inventory, and the, the, we can then manufacture and distribute the product needed for curing diseases. And by owning that inventory, you, you essentially own the industry. Again, Cord Blood America C B A I. And for more information, our toll-free number is triple eight two five nine forty four forty nine. Matt, last month the company announced a deal to store cord blood specimens for BioCells Incorporated. They're headquartered in South America. Uh, can you tell us more about this? Are you looking at pursuing more deals along this line? You know, we're going to be very aggressive, Don, um, in both diversification of revenue stream and in acquisition. What BioCells represents is a diversification of revenue stream. From 2003 until through 2009, we, were, we had one form of revenue, and that was processing and storage of stem cells for Cord Blood America and its subsidiary, CoreCell. By building our own lab, now rather than being the subcontractor, we can be the general contractor. And what that means is other companies that process and store stem cells can, you, can outsource our lab services to process and store for them. So we did that, we did that contract with BioCells out of Argentina. Um, we'll be working with five countries that they're establishing satellite offices in, and they're gonna, we're going to process and store the stem cells here in the United States. Now, you have always said that a large part of your growth strategy would include more acquisitions. Obviously, the Stella Cure uh, deal that you just announced, obviously, this is still holding true, correct? It is. I mean, Don, you've been tracking us. It's, uh, we've done four in four years now, four acquisitions in the last four years, and I think 2010 is going to be the year of a few more acquisitions. We're very, very... Uh, bullish on, on doing it. We're very, being very aggressive and uh, hopefully we can uh, use the acquisition method to really become a global player in the stem cell storage space. Matt, when you and I first started talking about cord blood here on the program, uh, we used to always have to talk about the fact, uh, the differentiate, difference between cord blood stem cells and the controversial stem cells, embryonic. Uh, we almost don't have to talk about that anymore, but I thought I should ask you maybe one last time to give us a difference between what you folks do and what has been controversial in the past. Yeah, the controversial form of stem cells, Don, are, are the embryonic stem cells, and that's not what we do. Um, we store stem cells from the umbilical cord. Uh, it's after the child is born. Uh, the umbilical cord is then clamped on both ends, and the umbilical vein is drained into a blood collection bag. And within that umbilical vein are a perfectly matched uh, set of stem cells so, uh, for that child. So we're not in the business of embryonic stem cell uh, research and development. I know that's a political hot potato. But what we are, we're in the business of, of collecting, processing, storing stem cells from, from born children that are perfect matches for their immune system. And right now, outside of the 4% that's being collected, 96% of that is simply just being thrown away, correct? Uh, pretty much, with a very fraction of a percent being donated to public banks. But, but, but I think the numbers would hold true. 95 to 96% of the stem cell samples are actually still being discarded as medical waste today, Don. Well, Matt, why is this a good time right now, with everything that's going on, for people to take a closer look at Cord Blood America? Well, let's just talk about technical analysis for a second, Don. This time last year, when I was on your show, we... We were growing, but we also raised a tremendous amount of debt to, to grow, and we had about $13 million approximately on our balance sheet about this time last year. And between this time last year and this time this year, we've reduced that debt by over $11 million as wow. per our last press release. So we're operating with very little debt at this point. We're uh, in, in an incredible growth stage. We've been able to raise over $15 million in the last uh, 18 months or so. 
And so we're being we're in a very aggressive point where our balance sheet is, is all but cleaned up. We have um, uh, credit facilities and, and, and cash facilities to go out and be aggressive in the acquisition market. So I believe that, that now more than ever, if someone was to look at our, our stock as, a, as, a, as an option to purchase, now more than ever we're technically in a very good position to, to be purchased. It's been a fabulous story to watch over the last several years, uh, Matt. Again, Cord Blood America, CBAI is the stock symbol. We're reinitiating coverage this week and look at you very closely over the next several months. Uh, can't wait to see more updates as you continue to grow. Thanks for joining us on the program. Yeah, thanks, Don. Very, very much appreciated. Take care.